B. <laughs> it likes this log block. It just hit this log block, now it's just an <laughs> B.exe has stopped working. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, cow to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, just helping my friend. Uh, only Michael claimed this. Oh, also welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew someone would eventually find and look for my witcher, so I was like, someone's probably going to see this eventually. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Finn and Iz found it, and they were like, they were like, ah. Well, you're about to see me. Hello. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a weird mob. <laughs> that's a weird looking witch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought if we use a hay bale to break their full, then the drops are not going to go through. Ah. If you get what I mean. Yeah. We could put a hopper minecart in, actually. Yeah, we could actually put a hopper minecart in. That would be good. The witch farm is done. The only unfortunate thing is, for some reason, the rates don't seem as good as they should be. And I'm talking about when we AFK way up there, which basically unloads all of the land and everything else that's down around here, so that the only spawnable spaces are within the farm. But for some reason, like I say, the farm is still being really slow. It seems to spawn somewhere between 3 and 8 witches per flush. And by flush, I mean they walk over some trip wires, and then they get pushed into a water stream by water, shot up a water pipe like I am being right now, although this isn't the water pipe. So they get shot up this water pipe, then they get moseyed over this way, then they fall down a chute, and then... They land here. Now if they land on this hopper here, they automatically die and the drops go into these chests here. There's item sorters at the back of these. But if we don't want them to die, we kind of just kill them on here and then... And the drops land on this hay bale, but to make them go into the hoppers we just... We just do that. We just retract the hay bale and they fall into the hoppers. And as I was saying before, we do need to get a hopper minecart. Yeah, you can see, four just fell that time. For some reason, we never get more than six or somewhere between six and eight per flush. But I shall demonstrate. So, we flick that. Then we wait for the witches. Any second now. There we go. So, that was four. Oh, five. Okay, six. All right, there was six that flush. But this is what we do. Kill them like that. Then retract the hay bale. They go into the hoppers. And then they get sorted by the item sorter. And there aren't really many drops here. It's not sufficient as we would have liked. But I guess it's okay for the first witch farm we've ever built. And I'm sure that the Il Mango design is probably more efficient than this. But yeah, this one is the one by Logical Geek Boy. If you're interested, I have put a link to it in the video. So I am at Penn's place and we are trying to get a llama that is a 15 slot llama. What we mean by that is a llama that has 15 chest slots. And this one has 9, for example. The yellow ones all have 6. Oh, melon. How did that get there? Uh, yes, anyway. We're breeding them up to try and get a 15 slot llama because 15 slot llamas are tougher and they have stronger spitballs and obviously they carry more storage. So it's a win-win-win if you get a 15 slot llama. Unfortunately though we keep getting three slot llamas and uh, what we do with those is we just let them frolic off and have a beautiful merry majestic life out in the wilderness and... Yeah, as I said before, getting a load of llamas is very, very important for my future because I want to have a llama caravan and I don't mean 
a caravan full of llamas, or a llama-shaped caravan, but a great big herd of llamas that follow me around and basically carry my base around for me. So llamas are my base, as well as the road. Yeah. You guys are epic. So a life on the road with nothing more but llamas. What more could you need? And here is the mighty Pen Pen with food, hopefully. Any food? Hey, there we go. Babies. Hello, baby. Whoa. <laughs> they really do crank their neck back quite a bit. Okay, I think one of our missions is going to be to get as many hay bales as possible so that we can breed these up. Because they do get through quite a lot of food. Especially when you feed the babies to try and get them to grow quicker. So I guess we ought to go back to the base and try and get as many hay bales as we can. Okay, let's go this way. This way? Yeah, this way. Right, mission accomplished. <laughs> I just remembered whilst I'm here, I have some wool to pick up from our CJ. There we go, Mr. B's Christmas wool. That's going to make a few candy canes. Thank you, our CJ. Oh, trading box. Okay, and it looks like our CJ is selling slime. Let's have a look over here. Oh, sand. One diamond per stack. Well, I didn't bring any diamonds with me. Cactus starter kit. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to come here with my diamonds. But we've got what we need for the time being. So we'll head back and use all of this wool up. Hello, it is me, Io, and we have we are gonna create we have created a chonker, and oh, he is eating me now. He is uh, glorious. <laughs> the chonk. I have I have made a way for him to eat people. How do you get He's out? Now, he he can feed. He can consume. He may consume. <laughs> oh wow. It isn't the deity on the server, but <laughs> it consumes all of Oh, we have an is. We have an is up there. Yeah. You have an is? Hello, Cooper. Hello, oh, you have an is. Yeah, we do. Cooper, I have made the chonker. Yes, is. We present to you the chonker. <laughs> I am lost. I am very... Very lost in the forest. Of... He is eating I... you. Well, he is hungry. He wants melons. That's what he wants. <laughs> you guys... There we what, go. What? Goodbye. Oh, I just forgot how my boy is too. Oh, there's nothing here. Minecraft. Let's... Goodbye. I should make something there. Just like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but this area, you will have to. You will have to look for the one spot that you can go down in. Oh, that's cool. So, like, well, you're just here, just, like, walking around. You have to crouch to actually well, get into it. Yeah, there is... Oh, okay. 
Oh, well, there's snow. Um, but if you, if you see this, if you come down it, there are two different paths, and, and all you will see is like this, basically. But right now, <laughs> I'm I don't have the snow or the powdered snow yet. But once you fall down here, you are going to be put in a giant room that you will have to do parkour or something in. Okay. Because I know Penn loves parkour. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. But the correct way is the opposite <laughs> oh, yeah. direction. Oh, yeah. When it comes to decorating this cave, I've been a very, very busy person, which we're about to see. Uh, not sure if I've shown this off yet, because it's actually been a few days since the last recorded, but... Basically, that's the um, the storage system for the Il Mango wood farm, which we should be able to just see. Yeah, you can kind of see it poking out there. But that's the Il Mango four type tree farm. And we know about these farms. But yeah, um, if I come round this way, I'd say that half of this is now decorated. So here is where you drop in from, from above. And you land sploosh in there. And then that takes you back up to Christmas Valley. But yeah, basically, uh, this is what I've been up to. So you can see I've actually put dripstone at the back of this, and I've used lots of different uh, oak variants. And yeah, I have the copper up at the ceiling there, which is kind of acting as supports. I've used copper everywhere here. This is my main storage room. And I've decided to actually keep part of the cave that's kind of pushing its way into this. Decided to keep it for aesthetic purposes. Then we have the amethyst geode through here. And I've been harvesting that quite often. And now let's go through this way. We have... Yeah, we have lots of signs saying where to go because it's a bit of a warren. But yeah, here's the enchanting room. Then we have another corridor. So there's farms and rail station that way. I'll uh, show that off in a minute. But we have... The villagers and then I have some small smelters here and then through here we have a water cave it's kind of like a little pirates hideout pretty cozy and yeah for some reason I keep getting these mofos spawning in here as they are also spawning in all of the other farms but yeah, we've got these farms, which I already showed you, except this. This is just a mini cactus farm. And that's been producing as well. Then we have a manual dripstone farm. And this little rail system here, which I think is quite neat. I actually did this, uh, designed this myself. Okay, there are actually two minecarts there. But basically, whenever an incoming minecart comes down this track, it kicks you out and then it bumps into this cactus the cactus breaks it goes into this hopper then it gets fed under into this dispenser and automatically there's a comparator at the back underneath these carpets which helps to spit out another minecart to replace the old one but you can also do this to get a minecart out if you need to and when you press this button you may have noticed as well but it actually switches this track so that it'll go back up this way and it'll go all the way up to weird williams base who only lives a couple of hundred blocks that way. But yeah, that is... That's basically all of that. This here... These are the drop outputs of this thing up here. And I'm going to have to drink a night vision potion to basically show you what's going on. So... Yep, we have a mob farm. So I basically converted the slime chunk into a general purpose mob farm. So it does produce slime as well, which I think is pretty nifty, but I think that's everything. Okay, let's go back up to Christmas Valley and see what's been going on up here. All right, so I have been breeding up the llamas. In fact, this is a new one. Let's, uh, let's get a chest and stick it on him. Now then, Clive, buddy, you any good? Right, he's tame. Let's stick a chest on him. Whoa, there he is. There you go, Clive. Okay. Okay, here's a nine slot llama. Which isn't brilliant. Uh, here we have Stuart. Any of them with uh, purple... Yeah, like Ruth here. Any of them with purple carpets 
are 12 slot llamas. So they will be stronger than the 9 slot llamas. But we have a couple of those now, which is great. Yep, this is how Christmas Village is looking. So I have added those Christmas lights on the candy cane. And I have also added, let me just swoop around. Yeah, this sprig of holly that's now got some snow on it by the looks of it. So it has been snowing here. I wouldn't have known because I've spent all of my time down in that hole. But yeah, it's all coming together. We have the family day out, which, um, which IO built. And then we also have this, which, well, I built the igloo as we saw, but the powder snow maze by I IO. Okay, do not enter. Well, he says that it's just about finished, so hopefully we'll be able to see that in a day or two's time. Everyone's been hoping for someone to come along and build a big experience farm for the rest of the server, so I set myself the task of putting together an Enderman farm. This farm's just like the ones I've built in the past, except this one has a hotel-style lobby. It's built far out into the void so that all of the Enderman spawns get concentrated to the top platform above the player, and they all try to attack an Endermite which is in a minecart in the middle. All the Endermen run towards the Endermite trying to attack it, but then they all fall down the chute. They get left with half a heart of health, and the player can conveniently kill them by just swinging their sword. So we can swing our sword, kill them in one hit, and just get all of the XP. I'm not going to go over any of the technical details to do with the farm, but if you would like a tutorial, just let me know. The best thing about this farm is probably the Enderpearl disposal system. It's extremely fast and well optimised for servers, because it stops the excess entities, i.e. Enderpearls, from accumulating in massive numbers and causing a whole ton of server lag. That is just about everything that I have to tell you all, so just enjoy the rest of the time lapse. Okay, this next part was absolutely trial and error. I had to try and first of all spawn an endermite from throwing enderpearls. Then after that, I needed to name it before I put it in a minecart, because if you try to name it while it's in a minecart, you won't be able to name it, so you have to name it first. But you can see here I'm completely just wrestling with it and trying to get it into place the best I can. There we go, the Ender Lounge Mark III is now up and running. So, welcome to the Ender Lounge, no auto clickers, no AFK. Thanks. And over here we have a Ender Pearl disposal chest. Uh, so yeah, never ever put your valuables in this, because it will just spit them out. But you can turn it on and watch the Ender Pearls just fly off into the void. Pretty cool. Then, there's also a thing for lapis, books and anvils. And I put all of that stuff in there. Uh, yeah. There's basically everything that you could want in here. There's even sofas. And the farm itself is absolutely nuts. As you can see, I'm joined here by Coop right now. Pen just visited about five minutes ago. And uh, I think other people are soon to be coming to use it as well. So, as you can see, I am level 89, 
and this farm is just ridiculous. But the one main issue that we have being in vanilla still is that the XP orbs kind of don't go into your infantry all at once like they would on a paper server. So we're going to have to wait until that optimizes the farm a bit more because it does take a really long time for the XP orbs to go into your experience bar. Uh, Pen's going to bring an axolotl to put inside this tank. Oh, and Io has entered the end. And the other pretty cool thing about this farm is it produces Enderman heads. Even though I didn't actually make an item filter to filter them out. We're back at Christmas Village and Santa has come to town. That scrounger's handiwork. And it fits in really well. And we also have the secret Santa presents to open. Loads and loads of presents this year because we have so many players. And this week Michael has built a house. Complete with water mill. Very nicely done. And Ender Knight Pro lives just behind. I love how this place has turned out, very neighbourly. Well, what do we have here? Donate to the Melon Lord. You know what? I actually will. But I need to go and get my diamonds. They're at home again. It is time to open the presents to Pigstep, apparently. Very Christmassy tune. Okay, let's go and see what's going on down here. So, we've got presents for Iz. Lemon Butt. Targ. Eggs, Noobly, Pro, Only Michael, oh, seen this one already, oh, one for me, and I-39, the spooky sounds in this one, looks like someone got I-39 zombies for Christmas, right, Pro's gonna open his, I can hear scuttling about and sniffling in it. What's he got? Ah, oh, epic! He got a horse! And some foxes! Oh wow, that horse is a jumper! Look at that horse. That horse is amazing. Okay, Pen says me next. Wow. What? That is insane. Who gave me a block of netherite? That's crazy. And the tridents and the books. That is mad. Whoever you are, thank you very much. Looks like I've got another one to open. Yes, more netherite. And sand. And glowberries. Excellent. That's very good. Thank you very much. And of course, everybody else opened their presents and got some really good ones. Some quite unusual ones. And, and overall, I would say that everybody seemed very happy and very grateful for all the gifts that they received. As for the netherite block and the glowberries, I'm going to put them on show in my farming area. Well, there you have it. That was Christmas 2021 on Phoenix Craft Season 5. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, I'm sorry to leave you all on a cliffhanger, but you're going to have to find out in the next one. But I'll tell you one thing. It's a massive mega project. So... I hope you look forward to that. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers and bye-bye.